Hello, everybody. This is Gerald Salenti, and here we are, April 3rd, 2024. And again, we're honored to have with us a man of men, someone who really knows about the Constitution, the Bill of Rights of America, what the country was founded upon, what our founding fathers fought for, and how we lost it. Judge, thanks for being here today. You know, today's April 3rd. It's uh, two days before April Fool's Day. Or after April Fool's Day. Guess what? Every day is April Fool's Day. We got a bunch of fools running the show. It's a it's freak a, show. It's, it's a it's a gloomy, dark time uh in America, Gerald. It's dark for civil liberties, it's dark for war and peace, uh, it's dark for government unlawfulness uh, all over the world. I mean, the Israeli government uh, follows no law and makes up its own rules as it goes along. Joe Biden is trying to play it uh, both sides. He's meeting with Muslim leaders in the White House today. What the hell is he going to tell them? He's sending 2,000 pound bombs to a criminal regime to slaughter innocents. And he's going to say something that somehow uh, makes that behavior acceptable. Um, the assault on First Amendment free speech rights in this country is regular, consistent, systematic, and at all uh, levels uh, of government. And the public is not happy. They're not happy with the choice of Biden uh, versus Trump. They're not happy with taxes. They're not happy with debt. They're not happy with war. It's a gloomy, down, sad time in American history. Yeah, unfortunately, you're right. And you know how concerned I am. And World War Three has begun. It's in front of everybody's eyes to see. Yes. And and again, look what they just did. Huh. How about how about Israel bombing the consulate, the Iranian consulate in Syria, and killing several Iranians, several Syrians, and then the United States tells Iran, "You better not strike back. Only Israel." has the right to, like the United States, to go into any country and bomb and kill whoever they want. But you're not allowed to retaliate because if you are, if you retaliate, then you're a terrorist. You're a militant. You know, this is another example of the Israelis making up their own rules as they go along. A consulate and an embassy are immune from assault by all international standards even in wartime, they didn't care. They demolished this consulate next door to the embassy. They killed two high-ranking generals. They killed five other people, and they killed a, a bunch of people on the ground, and they couldn't care less. Nope. As Professor uh, Sachs uh, calls them, they are a criminal regime. They are international outlaws. I'm waiting for a state actor to stop them, and if they keep this up, they're going to provoke somebody to do uh, something. Uh, well, they, McGregor, they, McGregor says if they get in a fight with Iran, Iran is uh, Russia is not going to allow Iran to be harmed. Yeah. Biden administration expected to approve massive eighteen billion dollars of F fifteen deal for Israel. Isn't that nice. Oh, oh, oh! That we're so sorry the people are being killed. Here's more bombs and here's more weapons to kill them. Ah, Judge, I want to talk about this article you have. The government attacks. The government attacks the freedom of speech, and you have a quote here from Voltaire: "I do not agree with a word that you say, but I will defend to the death your right to say it." He'd be dead. They kill him. <laughs> You're right. You're right. The gov the government uh, engaged. Uh, in five, in four, poorly publicized, except for one, the last one involving Trump, uh, assaults on freedom of speech in one week. One week. States of Texas and South Dakota enacted legislation ordering all government schools from pre-K to grad school and professional school to punish anti-Semitic speech. <laughs> How can the government decide what speech is anti-Semitic. How can the government possibly punish any speech? Okay, at the same time that happened, three FBI agents visited a lady in Stillwater, Oklahoma, knocked on her door and said, 
who want to talk to you about your social media postings. She says to them, where's your warrant? They say, we don't have a warrant. She goes, I have free speech. I'm not going to talk to you. Oh, we just want to ask you a few questions. Uh, show us, show me your ID. I showed it to you. Show me your ID again. I want to take a picture of it. She was filming the whole thing. They refused to show the ID so that she can take a picture. She closed the door and says, please leave. In my column, I advised, she should have called the local police. Said there are three people on my front porch, front porch with guns and they're harassing me. They yeah. would have sent about 10 police cars there in a, in a heartbeat. Then the FBI would have to explain what the hell they were doing evaluating somebody's speech. The fourth of these is, is equally as outrageous. It's the judicial branch suppressing speech. It's the judge in Trump's criminal trial, which begins in 10 days in New York City, prohibiting Trump from criticizing the Trump the judge's daughter. Now you may <laughs> say, what does Trump care about the judge's daughter? Is she a little girl? No, the daughter is a grown woman who raises money for Democratic candidates. Okay, she can do that. And she uses the trial of Trump before her father as a fundraising instrument. And this judge is saying, you can't criticize my daughter for doing that? That is an outright direct suppression of political speech of a guy running for president of the United States. All four of these things happened in one week. And they show, Gerald, the antipathy that government has toward its principal job, which is to, to defend our freedoms, to defend the rights guaranteed by the Constitution. Everybody that works for government, from a school board janitor to the president, everybody in between takes an oath of loyalty to the Constitution, which includes the Bill of Rights, which features the First Amendment, which guarantees the freedom of speech. And it is under assault. The Chris Ray FBI, Trump appointed him, lamented it many times, regretted it many times. The Chris Ray FBI has taken one third of the FBI manpower and assets. You ready for this? Sounds like George Orwell. And put them into predicting crime. <laughs> Not solving it, predicting it. That's how sad things are in America today. This FBI agent did say to this lady on the tape, some of us spend all week interviewing people about their social media activity. All week interviewing people. The government asking you to explain what you meant by your freedom of speech when you are criticizing the president of the United States, the lady was criticizing as you and I do. She was actually a lot more temperate than you and I are <laughs> criticizing Biden in Gaza. And that they wanted her to justify. She basically told them very politely, go fly a kite. You know, you, <clears throat> you mentioned about what went on. Was it Texas or was it North Dakota? Was it? I forget if it's North Dakota or South Dakota. It's South Dakota. One of, the, one of the Dakota. She wants to run for vice president with Trump. Yeah. And and about um, you say last week, the state of Texas enacted a law requiring all state schools from pre-K to graduate to punish speech deemed by officials to be anti-Semitic. You mean official pieces of crap? Yes. What officials are you talking about, Judge? Some, you some, mean some, some bureaucratic little lowlife jerk that can't get a job in the real world that sucks into the political system and then becomes the most arrogant people when they tell you what to do? Are those the officials you're talking about? Yes. Yes. To be anti, deemed to be anti-Semitic. Let's get this straight, everybody. The people running Israel are not Semites. Let's just start with that. They're Ashkenazi Jews from northeastern parts beyond Turkey back in the day. Semites are people from the Mesopotamia region, like the Palestinians. Like the ones the Israelis are slaughtering. That's right. They're the Semites. I keep hearing this word, and I got to tell you, you mentioned that guy Herzog before, the president of uh, Israel. He said, God gave us this land. Uh, and I'd say to him, hey, what if I don't believe in your God? Could you handle that? Could you handle that? 
Oh, no, I got to believe in your God. And you know why I have to believe in their God? Because, quote, we're the chosen people. You're just a piece of crap. You know, there are, that this is a dangerous strain in American politics, Gerald. There are Christian nationalists. They are almost all Republicans. They are almost all conservatives. They are, to a person, Protestants. They believe the same nonsense. And one of them is third in line to the presidency of the United States, the Speaker of the House of Representatives. He uh, embraces this ideology that the God, the Father, gave the present-day Israeli government jurisdiction over greater Israel from the river to the sea. They actually believe this. This is one of the reasons why when the Biden administration uh, approves whatever, I forget the number was, you, you cited it earlier uh, in, uh, in uh, weaponry, uh, they can bypass Congress because they know it will pass Congress if they go there and they know they'll be, except for somebody like Kucinich or, or Thomas Massey uh, or Rand Paul, nobody's going to object. No, 18 billion. 18 billion. 18 billion. 18 billion. The Biden administration expects to approve massive 18 billion F-15 deal for Israel. Wow. It's according to antiwar.com. And I want to go back to your article because there's a couple of things, you know, all, with all due respect. Again, you keep writing about, you said, to, uh, about the great freedom continuously pushes back at government that assaults it. The freedom of speech is a value and metaphor for unique, indefeasible, permanent, natural right to think as you wish, to say what you think, to read what you please, to publish what you say, and to do all this without a government permission slip and without fear of government reprisal. Now, this is what I want to say, the point I want to make. You keep using the term government permission, government reprisal. We have to stop using this word government. It's individual pieces of crap. We call it a government. They're individual pieces of scum. But we put them under a label of a government. Yeah. You call Hitler a government? You call Mussolini a government? You call Biden and Netanyahu a government? Do you call that little scum that you mentioned, uh, you didn't mention his name, Mike Johnson, the, the evangelical Christian playing house speaker? It's not a government, it's a crime syndicate. It is. It is a crime syndicate. I mean, government is essentially the negation of liberty. It exists by lying, stealing, stealing cheating. It regulates, it prohibits, it compels. And whoever uh, controls it is, uh, is the king of the hill, as reprehensible uh, as they are. The framers gave us a government that needed our consent to do anything. Today, we have a government that we need its consent to do everything. Ayn Rand called that an inversion. It's the exact opposite of what the country was founded on. Yep. It happened gradually over time, uh, but it's here. Uh, no, what, what, what you're writing, everybody, please... Go also to you got you got to see the people the judge has on. He just had on Dennis Kucinich. You go to you go to YouTube and you see judging freedom, and and the guests that he has on, the people that he have on, they're real Americans. They're real true patriots standing up for what this founding fathers fought for that we've all lost, and it just keeps getting worse. You know, you, you, we're talking about a crime syndicate. This is an article from the World socialist website biden obama and clinton defend u.s israeli slaughter of palestinians at record 26 million dollar fundraiser they had a fundraiser last week for biden clinton 
and Obama showed up there. They both defended what Israel is doing. And this goes on. Clinton and Obama categorically defended Biden's policy in Gaza and declared their support for the Israeli state. When a protester interrupted Obama, Obama snapped back, quote, you can't just talk and not listen. That's what the other side does. Who's the not other side? You and me preaching, yeah. preaching rule of law and peace? Yep. Yep. You can't just talk and not listen. You have to listen to me. Don't you know who I am? I'm a little boy of nothing that sucked up to the Pritzker family. Oh, the people that own the Hyatt Hotel. Yeah, I was a little clown boy over there in, in Illinois. They bought my way in to run for president. I lied to the people. I told them I was all for peace. I even won the Nobel Peace of Crap Prize. Obama quoted in a book, Double Down, I'm Really Good at Killing People. Launched the Afghan troop surge. I got to get that guy Gaddafi out of there. Assad has to go. You have to listen. You're not allowed to think for yourself. That's America. No exaggeration, Gerald. It's a sad and uh, and dreary and dreary place. It's not going to get better until the election, and then I don't know what's <laughs> going to happen. Yeah, the election. What? What do you, What do you want? Mickey Mouse or Donald Duck? Yeah, unfortunately, that's the choice this year. Uh, particularly on on Israel, uh, Trump might actually be worse than Biden. You mean the Trump that pardoned Jared? Kushner's father. Yes. And Kushner's father gave him a million dollars for his campaign. That that Trump? Same the Trump. Kushner where Netanyahu stays at their house when he comes to America? Same Trump. Yeah. Or the Trump that got a hundred million dollars from Sheldon Adelson and, and moved the embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem and said to Israel, hey, that land you stole over there in the Golan Heights that belongs to Syria, it's yours. That Trump. Same hey, one. Judge, what happened yesterday or, or two days ago with Israel bombing the aid workers in Gaza, the uh, world's central kitchen? Um, you, you've had some people talking about that on, on your show. So they followed these people for an hour and a half. They fired at them three different times. This was no accident. They knew exactly who they were. They were in a well-marked vehicle. I've seen the video. They were in a well-marked vehicle as uh, World Central Food. Uh, they had already cleared it with the IDF when they were entering and where they were going. Um, these were Westerners. One of them uh, was American. The chef is Spanish, but an American uh, citizen. Did everything uh, properly, and his seven top people uh, were blown away uh, by the Israelis. And now they stop delivering because they're afraid. Of course. You can't blame them. No. And now the people are starving to death. They're bombing the place to ruin. Oh, and they're coming out with the BSO. It was a mistake. Oh, you're the people that say you know where Hamas is and you're bombing the hell out of everywhere? Oh, and that's what they said, by the way. They thought one of the people in the truck was a Hamas guy. That's according to Haaretz, the Israeli newspaper. Even if they thought that, nothing would justify uh, what they did. Nobody believes their denials. Nobody accepts the so-called apology from uh, President uh, Herzog. Uh, the crowds are demanding that Netanyahu uh, resign. Netanyahu is a monster who presides over a criminal yeah. gang. His replacement will be just as bad. Yep, he might exactly. have, a, have a happier face, but it'll be just as bad. Yep. And, you know, they also, since October 7th, Israel has stolen 6,671 acres of Palestinian land. Wow. Wow. But don't forget, God gave them this land. It's in the good book, chapter 6, section 8. 
This is in violation of the Geneva Convention and Article 242 of the United Nations. So the people that fight back against the people that stole their land, their terrorists and their militants. And the American government uh, accepts it. Yep. Uh, the Congress doesn't vote on sending anything to Israel. The president just uh, authorizes it. Secretary of State uh, Blinken perjures himself by declaring and writing under oath that the um, armaments are an American national security <laughs> emergency need, because that's what the statute requires in order to bypass uh, Congress. And no, nobody raises an eyebrow. Yep. And then we, uh, you're talking about Netanyahu. He said that the uh, that they're going to go into Rafah. He said it's needed, quote, to achieve victory over Hamas. This will take time, but it will be done. We will enter Rafah and we will eliminate the Hamas battalions there for one simple reason: there is no victory without entering Rafah. And there is no victory without eliminating the Hamas battalions there. I guess there's no victory without starting a war with Iran either. You know, I've been warning in the Trends Journal for over a year that if Israel goes to war, the United States and or Israel go to war against Iran, it's going to be officially World War III. And as a trend forecaster, we make connections between different fields. You're going to see oil prices spike to above $130 a barrel. Ooh. That's going to crash the economy and the global equity markets. As we're speaking, you're seeing Brent crude going toward $90 a barrel. You go back and listen to my videos just a few months ago, Brent crude was around $73 a barrel. This is going to wipe out economic growth, not only in America, but around the world. And now it's summertime. You, a lot People use a lot more cars. They drive a lot more. The prices are going to escalate, drive inflation higher. But they don't care because the politicians get all the free money they want. They don't have to work. Remember when they locked down everything? Yes. You can't go to work, but we keep getting our money. You don't get yours. Correct. And if you don't pay your taxes, we'll come after you. Oh, by the way, we'll borrow whatever we need. Yeah. We'll In steal whatever we want. No, this is serious what's going on. And again, before they bombed Syria, the consulate, this week, last week, death toll in Israeli airstrikes on Syria's Aleppo airport rises to 52. Mm. They bombed the airport last week. And Not even on the front page. No. No, this is from antiwar.com. You don't get this at all in the mainstream media. And then going back to, we're talking about, they killed this, the Iranian commanders. Let's just go back a couple of weeks ago. They killed a bunch more a few weeks ago, too. So this is well, going to escalate. And the people in the United States will believe the lies that the government sells them, just like 82% of the people believe little Georgie Bush, we're going to get that guy Osama bin Laden dead or alive. And we went into the Afghan war. They're going to use a false flag event to get the people to support more mass murder in the name of war. Well, what you say, if you had said it uh, 10 years ago, would have been laughed at. Five years ago, people would have scratched their head. Now it's understandable and easily acceptable because of what the government has done. And then we got to look at the Ukraine war and how they're ramping it up over there, which we said they were going to do. 
They're going to keep ramping it up and ramping it up. They're not going to stop. Well, Ukraine will be gone as a country then because they can't defeat the Russians. Uh, they just uh, they just can't do it. If if Mike Johnson gets the sixty one billion, forty billion of it stays right here into the military industrial uh, complex. It's not going to change anything over there, yeah. except to except to enrich uh, Zelensky and his his thieving uh, buddies. Again, the United the European Union called Ukraine the most corrupt country in Europe. The latest poll that came out from Ukraine, 89% of the Ukrainian people are concerned about government corruption. Wow. Wow. Yeah. But hey, we got to stop them because if we don't stop those Russians, before you know it, they're going to be attacking Europe. Right. And you got and that guy Tusk coming out and saying, the, the prime minister of, of Poland saying that the era of peace is over. We have to, we're in a pre-war era and we have to prepare for it. And, mm -hmm. And another piece of garbage, scum, crap, that guy Stoltenberg over there, the uh, head of the NATO. Hundred billion dollars they want to come up with for defense. Add, uh, add, to the, add to that, Macron, the president of France. These people are crazy. They don't know what they're doing. Putin could press a button and Paris is gone. Macron is out of his mind. When you look at Macron, Schultz, Sunak of uh, Schultz of uh, Germany and Sunak of, of the UK and Macron's popularity ratings, they're in the toilet. Right. As I keep saying, when all else fails, they take you to war. They, they understand that and that's what they're doing. And that's what they're doing. So we need peace on earth, goodwill to all. We just went through the Easter holiday and I'm a warrior for the Prince of Peace, as I'm sure the judge is as well. We want peace on earth, goodwill to all. Judge, thank you so much for what you're doing. Everybody, please consider donating to Occupy Peace. And don't forget to go to Judging Freedom. The guest that Judge Napolitano has on there, you're not going to find anywhere else. Thank you so much, Judge. We'll see thank you, Gerald. All the best, my friend.